Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Stuart Best, and tonight we have Larry Taylor for our updates. And there's a lot going on out there. <clears throat> we're gonna, I guess we're going to start with the weather, but we can start anywhere. Hi, Larry. How are you doing over there in the mountains? <laughs> oh, just sitting here letting all the solar radiation drip down. <laughs> I did a little mowing today, and, and, and I've turned red almost. It went through my clothes even. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would, I'm not sure what your... Uh, UV rating is, but it's been very, very high. There's something going on in the sun that is uh, not not good at all. But, uh, you know, most people are totally oblivious to all of this and the electromagnetic changes. I think we're in that period of time that the Book of Enoch talked about, where the uh, seasons all get messed up up here. For example, we are having... Uh, all kinds of weird stuff going on. Uh, the apple trees, the plants, they seem all messed up. It's like they really don't know where they are or what season they're actually in. So, uh, I don't know. What about this storm? Or we should say storms. Have you been tracking any of that? Trying to watch it pretty closely. Uh, Interesting name for this uh, new one, I think, uh, Hermes or something like that. Uh, Yes. Yeah, it sounds more like a spacecraft than a storm. But, however, um, it's interesting. uh, The way this thing has come in, you know, off Africa and come in to the region it has and made it into the Gulf of Mexico and it, you know, I was watching it by satellite earlier, and it's really, really big. It strengthened from a depression number nine to a tropical storm and got named already today. And now they're saying it's strengthening in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. They're watching it very, very closely, and uh, they think that it may gain hurricane strength before it begins at wherever it decides to landfall. They're, they're looking at northern Florida, but they're not really sure. Well, no, as I understand it, the governor has declared a state of emergency, and they're expecting 8, 12, 20 inches of rain in some places, I guess. Well, that's what I'm hearing, and, and you can certainly, you're, you're certainly also watching a very nervous Louisiana and Texas coast that's hoping it don't come any further uh, their direction. Yeah, I suppose because they really don't know. Now I did under I did hear I don't know if it's true or not that they expect this thing to track all the way up through to Maine, uh, and all along the coastal regions because of some other tropical depression that's out there in the Atlantic that it's going to hold it closer to shore than than normal. They thought maybe. Have you heard any more about that? I mean, this thing. You remember the. <clears throat> the people who, I don't know if you call them visions or what, but they were talking about a disaster that was going to occur in either September or October, and it was going to be a major disaster. Do you suppose this that. could be it? I remember that, and, and also, uh, if you remember... Uh, the the seer from uh, Finland, Norway, uh, Anton Johansson, he also had uh, spoke about a storm he was shown that, uh, you know, that would literally go up basically that same route and devastate a lot of areas. Uh, but they are saying that this is, is projected possibly to just go up the entire east coast, and that, that's covering a lot of land. Well, I know. It's... Uh... And they don't need any more water in in that area than they already have. And usually when they get nailed, all the low-lying... I remember Red Elk making a comment. He said to, uh, you know, this was from the uh, prophecy that that the Lord gave him about 
what was going to happen in America. And he said, if you're by a river, you're by a brook, you're by a stream, you better move out because they're going to become raging torrents, which is interesting because of the bots and their atmospheric rivers. And uh, now they're talking about, I don't know what you call them, popcorn storms? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they look like nuclear bombs going off. They appear basically out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden you you're in a deluge. So, what's going on? Is this um, this can't be just jet stream related, and it can't just be. Uh, I don't believe it's just solar re- related either. There's got to be some massive changes going on that maybe we're not cognizant of that are causing all this erratic weather. I know we were given a warning. I can't remember who gave it, but that maybe this year we're going to be making up for all the years we had no hurricanes at all because they're coming off for, uh, Africa one after another. In fact, it was just pointed out this afternoon that there's another huge storm that they're watching coming off from Africa right now. It's already developing into a circular pattern. I, I remember that, you know, I, and I've seen that. And also, uh, you know, there's been a number of reports, and Stan Hill was one of those that, that is reporting that uh, the, the sun, the anomalous sun activity, which, you know, between you and I and the fence post more or less, you know, we know that the uh, – the dwarf star, uh, the binary yes. star of this system that's so close now in range with the, our own sun, that this probably is affecting because of its massive, massive gravity, uh, yes. you know, and, and effect. And, and it, that it is affecting our sun, which in turn is affecting the Earth and the other planets too. Matter of fact, there's a lot of reports like on solar weather that uh, a lot of the, the uh, planets are brightening. Uh, even their moons are brightening, which which you can think of scriptures that talk about that. But uh, there seems to be uh, you were asking what effect is is causing this weird weather systems and stuff change. I would think that what is happening is the the interior, the core of the planet. San Diego says it's number one. It's in movement. It, it's and it's also changing uh, a little bit like uh, its shape. To some degree is what they're saying. It's also moving uh, uh, magma under the earth, moving it around. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, you know, I would think that, but we are seeing really the most anomalous uh, weather systems. I'm hearing it from everywhere. Uh, even people in the Philippines are writing me that things are strange there, too. And, uh, you know, for number one, I've had a constant. I always like growing sunflowers, and I like them to, to bloom out and, and, you know, the hummingbirds go for them and then they have the seeds. This year, Stuart, the the, uh, the plants seem like they came up late, they came up weak, they leaned a lot, and now, even before they've ever made any seeds, they're already drooping like it's fall. And a lot of the other uh, brush and uh, trees around where I live seem to be acting like it's fall already. They're changing colors a little. And it, it is so strange, and even the animals are acting strange. Yeah, we've got color changes in the leaves right now here. Yeah, very odd. Let me let me just read something. Chapter seventy nine. I'm going to only read part of it, and you can comment each uh, sentence. It's from the Book of Enoch, chapter seventy nine. In the days of sinners, the years shall be shortened. I want to stop right there. Um, how do you shorten the years? Now, we're on a 365.25 year, right? So uh-huh. does this thing say we're going to go to back to the 360-day year? It seems to be implying that. Hmm. And remember, the Lord said, except those days be shortened, the elect would not even survive it. Well, that's true. So this is kind of interesting. In the days of the sinners, the years will be shortened, which would imply that nature kind of goes berserk. Well, let me continue here. 
Their seed shall be backward, this is mankind, in their prolific soil. Everything done on earth shall be subverted and disappear in its season. The rain shall be restrained. Well, we haven't had that happen yet. (laughs) And the heavens shall stand still. In those days, here's here's a clue right here. In those days, the fruit of the earth shall be late and not flourish Uh in their season. And in their season, the fruits of the trees shall be withholden. The moon will change its laws and not be seen in its proper period. So that we must be in the preliminary ripples of these changes that are soon going to be upon us. So, yeah, I think so. If you heard, no, we had um, Marshall Masters. Maybe we should get into that because this may be what's causing a lot of this anomalous weather. Uh, He said that he had a friend of his evidently attend Dr. Doom. Major Ed Names' uh, kind of swan song uh, revelations, I guess. And you, you listen to that. In fact, I think you're the one who sent it to me. You want, you want to go into that a little bit? That kind of frightening. What he had to say. Well, well, actually, it was it was actually a uh, a debriefing. A uh, well, what uh, they somewhat titled it: uh, Ed Dane's exposing Planet X, which. Uh, you know, Marshall Masters indicated this will get you killed. I mean, this is a subject they will not allow to be spread around, and uh, they have blocked it for, oh, years and years. And um, this report that he had was the latest Planet X 2016, breaking with Ed Dames, the Black Swan song, and the kill shot. He said it's real, it's here. Uh, it's inbound. And seen it will be seen in Earth's sky December 2017. I mean, and they're not talking about taking a picture of something lower than the sun. They're talking about you can walk outside and look at it like the moon. It'll be that close. And I did have a uh, a pastor in the Philippines email me. I read it today. Uh, he had had a yeah. uh, dream about Nibiru, and and that was the name of it was Nibiru, and uh, said that uh, that it would be. Uh, you know, I hear about that he was saying about the same time as, uh, you know, Ed Dames is talking about and, and, and you're talking about in the Omega Code, which I find amazingly, uh, you know, accurate. And, but Ed Dames basically uh, shared this debriefing, and that's what released this information that I posted that today, actually. And I think, well, you've got it. Uh, it's a video on Marshall Masters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it does go a long way, even with the Torah code, you know, that Richard Shaw posted, the latest one from Rabbi Glazerson. It really goes along your, your mega code and and uh, what Ed Dames had said and, and all the warnings. Uh, in the same time frame, and interestingly, the, the name Nibiru, uh, which uh, seems to indicate that... Uh, a matter of fact, I, and I'll share this, uh, the, the pastor in the Philippines that wrote me said that um, his son actually gets a lot of uh, uh, viewing somewhat uh, warnings from the Lord and, and, you know, has been one that sent me mm-hmm. some stuff on Obama. And one of the interesting things is, is one of the uh, planets of this uh, destroyer, uh, the Nibiru, is, uh, is actually... Uh, uh, inhabited and they're non-human and that just kind of goes along with what you know uh, other things that we know and, and Ed Dames simply uh, you know indicates also in his revelation that uh, he calls them Anunnaki but whoever they are you know they're not human particularly mm-hmm. uh, you can be humanoid and not be human I mean you know well there's a lot of angels yes. are humanoid in appearance but they're certainly not human <laughs> And so uh, all this stuff seems to be fitting together. And I saw on your uh, post for the uh, radio show tonight, you know, you had some interesting information from your Omega Code there with timing. Well, that's that's the thing that is really uh, interesting to me because if you go into Revelation on September 23rd, now that 
it just dawned on me, I'm kind of slow that way, that 923, they've been pointing to 923 right along. In fact, we proved it, that um, 911 was actually 923. 911 on the Gregorian calendar actually was on the Israeli calendar uh, 923. Now, if you go 923, that's September 23rd, right? Well, uh -huh. September 23rd, 2017, is Rosh Hashanah. Oh. So when you tie the, that together, that's when that star sign appears in the heavens. It's the only date it really shows up that accurately so if the star sign of um, Revelation chapter 12 then after that it says a great red dragon mm. well that's probably Nibiru and uh, the second sun and it would be paralleling. In other words, we have the we have the star sign on 923, and that's the warning. And then we have the passage of um, the the uh, entourage from the second sun, and the tribulation, the real tribulation, would then start. So that's what got me interested. Is uh, when you sent me that Bible code from Glazerson and and what Ed Dame said, he said it was going to be in December of 2017. Well, that matches almost perfectly with the book of Revelation chapter 12. So, well, what, is, what is interesting too, Stuart, and I'll read that yeah. for people that may not have heard this show or heard us talk before, I'll read this uh, real quick. Uh, Richard Shaw had sent me Rabbi Glazerson's latest Torah code on Nibiru, and here's the wording in it, which is really interesting. Number one, and these these are actually uh, these are Hebrew finds of words in the Torah, and then they're translated into English. And I'm reading the English translations. Number one, in the end of days, and across that is Nibiru in 5776. Warning, which is exactly, uh, and I thought about that, Stuart. I thought, well, that's true. The Torah code that it, I'm reading right now that just came out is true as of a couple of days ago when Ed Dames released that warning because that warning harmonizes with the Torah code. It just fits. And, yes, uh, it does. The warning has been established in 5776, which we're in right now, you know. And then number five, now here's the most interesting wording that is in that Torah code. It says, and it's talking about Nibiru now, or, or the star. It says, I mm -hmm. see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. <laughs> yeah, I see star of the sky. So, and, it, and this first one he has on his site there, lift up your eyes to the sky. Isn't that what um, the priest, I can't think of his name, Malachi oh, Martin. You're talking about Malachi Martin, absolutely that's what he said. That was, hey, and Stuart, that was literally the last warning he gave to Art Bell and his listeners before he he was killed. Yes. He said, watch the skies. So they've known that this thing is inbound for quite a while. They're calling it the star. Um, it, well, that matches up kind of with the Hopi and the blue star. Yeah. Also matches up with the violet. So I'm wondering if there's not a big, massive convergence here. Uh of the gravity wave, the cosmic radiation wave, and the approach of the destroyer. I've often wondered why in the book of Daniel it says that there is a time of trouble not ever seen before. 
That's true. And some of the uh, people that have researched ancient literature, and they ran it backwards, I guess. You know, they have these computer programs. Where the last time we had this approach, the earth was on the other side of the sun when it went by. Yeah. And so it, it, although it did a lot of damage, and I think that's probably during Exodus, but what was interesting is this time they say we're going to be on the same side as this thing mm-hmm. when it passes. So well, we've got the yeah. gravity wave, we've got the cosmic wave, we've got the close approach of this binary star system. Uh, yeah, we're in a lot of trouble, I think. And didn't you read somewhere, and I, I was looking for it, but I didn't do it quick enough, that the whole solar system has tilted? That is what uh, NASA, JPL, and the uh, I think Caltech is reporting that something has tilted our entire solar system. And can you imagine what we, we, we kind of wonder, well, what would that be? However, what's what I find so interesting, and I believe it, my, I believe what I'm saying is true. You can correct me if it's not, but for this gravity wave to come, to come in during this time frame with all of this other, it would have had to leave where it is coming from 20,000 years ago to get here, uh, you know, at the same time as the destroyer, et cetera. Yeah, it would have to be timed. I don't think people realize that the Lord doesn't play uh, pool with this thing. It is it is a uh, very delicately, accurately timed scenario that was set in motion, and I simply call it the agenda. It's a cosmic agenda. And nothing happens without his approval. And he set this in motion a long, long time ago. It depends on who you believe. Uh, Paul LaViolette claims 23,000 light years away. Others say it's 26,000 light years away. The galaxy core, when it exploded. But the waves of that won't get here until it's supposed to get here. And my guess is, from the ancients and everything that I can read, we are right on the cusp of the arrival of that sort of thing. And when I did the Omega Code, I couldn't believe what I was finding, how accurate it appeared to be. If you date, you go back into uh, Genesis, and the Lord says you have 120 years. That's what he told Nor. You have 120 years. So, as it was, so shall it be. So, I was looking for 120 years. Where do you date it? Well, the first Jewish Congress for the establishment of the nation of Israel occurred in 1897. So, you just go forward 120 years, 2017. So then I began to look and see, well, okay, if that's true, then all the cycles, 10-year, 20-year, 30, 40, 50, 70-year cycles, all should fall on very key, important dates in Israel's history, and they all do, every one of them. So that the chances of that happening are quadrillions and quadrillions to one. <laughs> So the divine hand of the Lord is obviously here, and that would go with what we were just talking about, the approach of Nibiru. Strange it is, now it's coming up in the codes. He's got another code here, too, I see. As you scroll down, it says, end of days, Nibiru, warning, Fifty-seven, seven, six, and you were just—you were, were just the one who said, "Well, that's what Ed Dames did." Yeah, he issued that, that's a warning. Exactly what he, yeah, that's exactly what he just did uh, right after this code came out. And, and of course, I don't even think Ed Dames knows the code people, and I, I, you know, I don't know if they know him at all. But uh, the code—he uh, literally fulfilled that code. Uh, even if there's more fulfillment coming. So um, that's interesting to me. I mean, 
you know. I'm not saying what Ed Dame – this is what I, what's so interesting to me, though, on the other hand, is the fact that, you know, I know a lot of people, you, you hear about, you know, they'll say, well, you know, Marshall Masters is a new ager. And Ed Dames, you know, that's that's uh, that's stuff we shouldn't even get involved with. But the thing they don't understand, uh, and and, and no, like No Eyes and Red Elk and et cetera, et cetera, you know, when 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 the Creator says, "I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh," what do they not understand about that term? <laughs> they don't they don't like the term all. They want to refine this down to the arrogant Christian. We are the only ones who get true <laughs> words of the Lord, and nobody else does. Well, that's uh, foolishness, but <clears throat> that's his, this is the head up and locked arrogant Christian. And you can't talk to him. There's no point in trying to talk to him. I've spent, what, 30, 30 years trying to, you know, talk to him, and you can't. Yeah, so there's yeah little what's point interesting, in it. I- yeah, and and what's so interesting though, and and you want, and I posted that link today, so people could watch Marshall Masters' video. You watched it, and you saw how emotional he got, how how emotional Marshall Masters got. Then he actually gave credit to Ed Dames for doing something the, that he he said, God bless him, and I thought, well, that's almost uh, putting an amen on. And of course, I know a lot of people won't like me saying that, but it's almost like an amen of what Ed Dames did to release that information or that warning that goes along with the Torah code. Well, it does. And, of course, you know, like uh, Marshall Masters said, this can be a death sentence. You know, there's a lot of people dead now already that have been trying to release information about this uh, incoming. Um What's his name from the Naval Observatory, Harrington? You exactly. know, he went down. Yeah, he's dead. You know, and there's been just too many astronomers. That <clears throat> do you remember the group of astronomers? I think they were on a tramway. Do you remember that? And the tramway broke loose, and they were all killed. Uh, I vaguely that do. Was, I vaguely that do, was, yeah. I think, down in New Zealand or somewhere, and all these guys were looking for Planet X. And there's been a lot of those kind of mysterious, how do we say, uh, kill-offs. It's kind no, of you, like you the... Also, uh, Clint- yeah. yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I was just going to say, you can link in there almost two... Uh, uh, you know, uh, James McCainy uh, and also uh, John Moore that were really big into releasing a lot of this data, and they they really went almost totally quiet, and James McCainy says this is not something you can talk about anymore. Uh, yeah, well, he went silent, <clears throat> as far as yeah. I know. In fact, he almost not only went silent, he kind of distanced himself from it, which I suspected maybe he was told to. You know, they have a way of getting to your family. Well, you know, your family will be killed if you don't shut your mouth. But I, I don't, you know, how are they going to, um, how, how are they going to, how do I word this, cover this up? This thing is inbound. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get bigger. The uh, natural phenomenon of Earth changes is going to get worse and worse. In fact, if you go into the book of Enoch, first chapter there's a little comment that makes people wonder or should make people wonder what would cause it he talks about great fear and trembling shall seize them even to the ends of the earth the lofty mountains shall be troubled the exalted hills depressed melting like a honeycomb in the flame. The earth shall be emerged, and all things which are in it perish, while judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous. Well, that's, wow. <clears throat> that's pretty uh, bad stuff. Well, you asked, sir, uh, you said, uh, how do you cover this up? Uh, if you remember, two people you can, you can think about, Standeo, number one, 
And uh, mm-hmm. Ed Dames, number two, and remember uh, Stan Dale had said that they're going to keep this quiet as long as they can because people have to keep going to work and funding the government and funding all of these preparations for the elite and, and doing the elite's work. So they're not going to tell anybody. They're not going to warn anybody. And then remember Ed Dames kind of gives a clue, and he says We're, uh, there's a big war going on and lots of militaries in the Middle East, and then everybody looks up and goes home. So you say, how can they cover it up? Well, the elite keep clamoring that we need a world war. Yes. And, of course, with the economies of the world tanking, which they are, in spite of uh, our illustrious leader telling us differently, (laughs) uh, (laughs) you know, we have bread lines that are 20 miles long all across the nation, and the only reason you don't see it <clears throat> Excuse me. Is because we have food stamps. Yeah. If you didn't have such a thing as food stamps, where people could go in at at their leisure and buy the food they need, you would have bread lines twenty miles long. Uh, all across well, you the country. Know, interesting. You? Yeah. I, I was just going to add there, Stuart, that uh, your your guest from last week, uh, Davis Bunn. Uh, alias uh, Thomas Locke, <laughs> if you will. Yes. You know, he's got the new book, book coming out, uh, I guess, this week, later this week, uh, you know, about the dominoes fall. And uh, what's so interesting, after he did that really incredible interview, you know, that you had with him, uh, I mm-hmm. began to notice news that was coming out, and it was global news, talking about the world bankers, and it literally was actually telling some of the details that he talked to you about in the interview and also will have in his book, you know. Uh, all of this is coming together. You know, we've got a global financial collapse at hand, basically. We've got an inbound uh, second sun that most people never knew existed, you know, in our solar system. Inbound, we've got a gravitational wave. We've got radi- solar radiation coming like crazy. Uh, we've got a predicted kill shot series of events, and then here's a world war, you know, we're on the verge of, and uh, wow. Well, Stuart, things, uh, things things are great. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> what me worry, Alfred E. Newman. Here, here's the headline for you. Major bank official. Banks are preparing for an economic nuclear winter. And it says, after years of giveaways to the mega banks, marketed to the taxpayers as quantitative easing, the crutches shoved under the bank-controlled global stock trade are about to snap, and bankers now are saying they are preparing for a collapse. Congressman Ron, Ron Paul predicted that those crutches would fail and the financial bubbles created by them would send the stock market into free fall. And the consequences right. will not be minor. So <clears throat> they are getting ready for it. Yes, Jared, and what, what's very interesting, too, L.A. Marzulli posted a uh, interesting uh, blog post this morning, and the way it basically reads, it says uh, Donald Trump has the elite nervous and worried very nervous. Uh, <clears throat> I noticed Trump went down to Mexico. How did that come out? It was it absolutely Has heard incredible. At all? Uh, yeah, I saw it. Absolutely incredible. He had an, a uh, televised uh, press conference. In other words, he had a secret meeting. Basically, basically, it didn't stay secret, but he had a. He was invited by the president of Mexico, and he took a quick trip there because he has an immigration speech tonight at uh, 8 o'clock. And, uh, well, actually in about 20 minutes, I suppose. But uh, he flew to Mexico, met, and everybody was, of course, condemning him and damning him for even thinking about going and playing like he had anything to do with politics or, or uh, you know, policy. But he went anyway, and then after the meeting that he had, which apparently went really well, uh, he and the president of Mexico had a joint press conference that looked very, very presidential, and it was interesting. 
it was interesting, Stuart. You'll have to see it uh, and listen to him. And uh, it was almost like it was anointed. It was very special, uh, the whole thing. And um, I tell you what, you know, he's got that confidence tonight. But I've never seen anybody with so many against him. They re- he reminds me so much, literally, of Israel. Everybody hates him. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. No matter what he does, it's wrong, <laughs> and whatever Israel does, it's wrong, too. And yet there, Israel's still there, and Trump is still there. Maybe there's a message somewhere in that. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I, I think Are we watching the Cyrus effect? I would not be surprised, and... and uh... All of this, too, at the same time is, is, you know, we've got so much happening in the Middle East. And what has really actually short-circuited everything is this Erdogan's Turkish invasion of northern Syria. And we can go there whenever you want to do that. Yeah, anytime. <clears throat> well, what, what's so interesting is the, uh, what's coming out of, of media overseas. Now, they're not talking about much of it. You, matter of fact, you hardly hear anything about Turkey or Erdogan or, or you know, any of that stuff uh, on mainstream media here in the U.S. But um, it appears that Obama and Erdogan and possibly Iran might have had some kind of setup. You know, we talked earlier about something that Putin might allow uh, that he might allow, uh, you know, a portion of, you know, Syria going to Assad and portion of it going to Iran and and Turkey taking part of it and, uh, you know, them keeping their Russian bases. However, it appears now from the news that I'm gleaning uh, and the intel that's coming out of Israel and the Middle East is the fact that Erdogan jumped the gun. The, apparently, Erdogan a little ahead of the time of the scheme, actually jumped the gun and sent his tanks into northern Syria ahead of the plan. And so he he's in uh, the latest report, you know, out of the Middle East was the fact that uh, his troops had, uh, they had fought their way and, and had taken this uh, location uh, called, uh, matter of fact, Depka file posted uh, this evening, said Turkey's broad intervention in northern Syria from Jarablus, remember that's the, the town they took, yep. says yep. the Turkish army, and this is from Debkafal, this is out of Israel, says the Turkish army now will advance to the east, to the west, and the south. Now that sounds like to me, Stuart, that they're going to take a large portion of northern Syria, and that is Erdogan's plan. And it says uh, the other uh, post today was that uh, Turkish and Kurdish forces braced in northern Syria for battle over Manbik in the Turkish invasion. So now uh, you've got, uh, you know, the the Turkish army and the the Kurdish fighters braced now to go into combat together against each other. Now what's so telling is the latest intel that's coming out of the Middle East is that it says that the Obama administration and the Iranian leadership, which is this is really unusual, are trying to get Erdogan to pull out of northern Syria, that he had went in too quick, and their little plan wasn't apparently going to go. The Kurds were going to fight. And now they say all that, they say unless Erdogan comes out from northern Syria, that they are expecting allies fighting allies and a Russian intervention by Putin. So... You know, this is interesting, what's going on over there, because here's a headline. Russia positions troops 50 miles from Alaska. Putin moves to protect the Russian Far East. Russia has announced plans to position a new coastal defense military division along its eastern coast, with troops expected to be stationed approximately 50 miles from uh, Alaska. Well, he's already, didn't he overtake a, uh, or it was an abandoned base in Norway, on northern Norway? Yes, I read they did. something about that. That was so, a, uh, that was an abandoned, that was an abandoned uh, NATO base, actually, and, and a U.S. base, joint base, uh, that, uh, you know, under Obama, you know, we all left. 
and Russia now has taken it over. And uh, you know, that's uh, remember when Sarah Palin said, you know, said I can stand here in Alaska and I can see Russia. Uh, she wasn't yes. joking, really, actually. And and you no. know, there's been a release too recently. If you you know, not in American news, but in the Middle East news, and we've talked about it on some of your intel updates that Russia has released a number of nuclear submarines into the Pacific, into the Atlantic, and up into the Middle East. So Russia's very, very busy with uh, moving their military and have been for almost a year or more now. Well, of course, they've been probing not only English, but, uh, you know, Norway and a few of those places, haven't they, with their bombers and running trial uh, cruise missile attack runs, and also along the uh, uh, U.S. borders. So what it looks like to me is we're slowly being encircled. Why would he do that unless Putin is planning to go into the Middle East? Because if he does that, does he not have to neutralize the United States? Well, uh, you know, he's play. It's almost like he's playing chess, Stuart. And you know, he's already. If you if you look at it from the angle of the NATO nuclear arsenal in, at Ikalark uh-huh. Air Base, Putin has basically uh, already uh, compromised that, uh, and also, uh, you know, checkmate as far as NATO's nuclear deals there. And, and at the same time, uh, you know, he's got his fingers in uh, getting into Turkey, but at the same time, he's still uh, opposite of Turkey in some events. You know, you remember back there when a lot of this started in Syria, you remember Obama was continually uh, not affording the uh, Kurdish fighters weapons, and he wouldn't give them to them. He just sent them to Iraq, which sent them to ISIS. And, yes, uh, remember that. And 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 you remember uh, Putin came out and said, "I support a Kurdistan. I actually support the Kurds." Now, will he still do that as they begin to be hammered by the Turkish uh, tank battalions? He may, uh, he, you know. And that's one of the things I think that Iran and and even the Obama administration now are nervous about is because. Erdogan jumped the gun, and you know he's going for he's going for territory. He wants a caliphate, a big one too. He jumped the yep. gun, and they're nervous about what will Putin do now because Putin has quite an quite an array of assets in that region of the world. Well, he would have to defend it, and does he not have a uh, treaty with Assad anyway? Not that he yes, can't he break it, but. He has to be careful because he's got treaties, obviously, with all the nations round about Israel. I, I firmly am a believer of the fact, in spite of arguments otherwise, that he is uh, uh, possibly Gog from the land of Magog, and it says, Be thou a guard unto them, all the allies. Well, that's what he's doing. He's, <clears throat> he's armed them all. He's guarding them, just like it says. And uh, he even said that this was going to be an irreversible trend into World War III. So maybe that's what we're watching. We're watching the final alignments and the confusion that brings about World War III. And I don't know if you can call it confusion. I I often wonder if this isn't (laughs) we're watching the Armageddon script here with uh, the Chinese uh, operations in the Pacific in our, you know, saber rattling, and then, and then you got North Korea, and I remember Ed Dames' comment that it would be North Korea that would be the first that would use a nuclear weapon. Yeah, in anger. And aren't, said in anger. In anger, yeah, and aren't they, haven't, uh, what's his name, you know, they're the kid that runs it in North Korea, hasn't he made mention of the exercises going on there that we're doing oh, with Japan? Yeah, he's he's making he's made a number of nuclear threats. They say that uh, where they manufacture uh, or, or actually test some of the nuclear devices, that he's active again in that region. Plus, he's got his military making very strange and anomalous movements uh, that the South Korea especially is watching, and we're trying to watch the satellites. But 
that they've been following some of uh, the movements, and it seems like he's got some nukes because they're hot sightings uh, that are being moved around the country, never left in one place for long. They're moving them around the country, and uh, you, you could actually, uh, you know, he could he could really cause a problem. I mean, no doubt about it. But what's interesting too is the report that Kerry, you know, John Kerry, Secretary of State, is now saying that that uh, the 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 situation in North Korea and the Chinese, especially the Chinese in this Yellow Sea, and also the China Sea uh, situation, that it's not worth a war. So it appears we're back. At, we're literally backing down again one more time. Uh, well, of course, that's what we do. I mean, we just back down and back down. But apparently, we're not yeah. going to confront. We're doing a lot of saber rattling, but we're not. You know, our allies, Stuart, are finding out we're not going to back them. Yeah, yeah. The big coward, but the big bully at the same time. Kind of strange. Yeah. Well, and then you get, you have to take a look at you know the space fleet, the TR three B routine. So if we've got all these weapons, are we going to try and use them in a little bit later? But it doesn't sound like that in, in the Bible because it, it more or less says America's just taken out in, in less than an hour's time. We're, we're just nuked. We're, we're hit from <laughs> well, all directions. Yeah, I would even say uh, biblically we're neutered. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like, I don't know. Um, did you see that UFO in Spain at all that was on YouTube? I'm trying at to all? remember which one that was. Uh, well, they're, they're by the ocean one. front. They're by the ocean front, and they, everybody's pointing out to the sky. This is video. I don't know if it's real or not. You never know with YouTube. But it, <laughs> it looked pretty pretty interesting. But they see this UFO. It hovers around, flies around a little bit. And then all of a sudden, this little alien gray appears. And huh. one of the guys goes over to talk to him or something like that and I don't know what the gray did to him but you can see him reach up and one of the things that makes me think it's real is you watch this gray Mm. he's a little short thing probably maybe three feet tall if he's that anyway he reaches up touches the guy on the forehead and you can see him blinking the the gray is blinking his eyes are blinking and uh, then all of a sudden he just vanishes and then the UFO comes down over the place where all these people are screaming and running and getting away. And then that's where the the uh, video stops. So it, it makes you wonder how much more of this weird stuff are we going to be witnessing as we approach the time of the end, you know? Well, I, I assume that we're going to see a lot more strange things than that before this is all said and done. I think so. And there's another picture of uh, I, Steve Quayle used to have a name for them. I can't remember what it is. But, uh, you know, the satellites that take these pictures of the sun. Yeah. And there is a huge winged object that the satellite took a picture of. Hmm. And there is a rumor going around, I don't know if you saw that either, on this object that's coming towards Earth, big, big object, but it's not uh-huh. Nibiru. They think it's a spaceship of some kind. Now they're even huh. calling it an Anunnaki arrival or something. It's really? huge, whatever it is. So we're going to see all kinds of weird stuff, I think. I think this is just the beginning of it. There's you know, it's just amazing. Uh, what else you got you want to talk about? Anything in particular that's on your mind? Well, one of the, the interesting things, a report just came out, too, that it says the FBI now says that foreign hackers have now penetrated state election systems in the U.S. 
and uh, says that their state databases are now compromised. I keep wondering, Stuart, are we really going to have a 2016 election in November? Well, you know, it kind of seems odd that right now they're talking about all of this and how the voting machines can be compromised. Doesn't it seem a little odd on the timing <laughs> that we know that Obama has to come up with something if he really, if that report that he definitely wants to, uh, you know, stay in the White House or whatever it is he's got in mind that they could cancel or stop the election, or they could claim after the fact that, well, we're not sure this is right, so we're going to have to do this over again. And the other question is, you know, you watch Hillary Clinton, and there is definitely something wrong. Yeah. The the videos of her, she is not well, and they're hiding it. So are they going to be able to hide it, and if for example, let's say she can't run or she has to drop out, not only because of baggage, we'll say, criminal baggage, but health. What happens if she drops out just before the election? Well, I've, I have seen some postings on, on uh, some of the uh, recent blogs that are talking about uh, that they also seem to be certain blogs seem to be really concerned about actually having an election in November because they keep saying if something happens to one or the other candidate, such as a sudden death, uh, uh, <laughs> et cetera, uh, uh-huh. you know, uh, you know, heavy baggage that just uh, are are actually a health situation that arises to where one of them can't make the election that uh, they suppose uh, the president will have to declare an emergency and uh, de- and actually delay or actually negate an election in November 2016. So uh, we're, we're in uncharted territory. We're in uncharted water, Stuart, uh, as far as a nation. We really, really are. And we're, we're there with a president that simply writes his own executive orders and does what he wishes. Yeah, and nobody stops him at all. No. And that's no. And that's the question that I have always had. How come? How, you know, we we nailed Clinton in his famous, well, it all depends on what is, is, and I did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> but anyway, we impeached him. How come Obama, who has now, I don't know how many issues that he could be impeached on, they don't do anything? You know, Sir, it almost, it, yeah, it almost Go makes ahead. me wonder, it almost makes me wonder if they haven't been given a little bit of uh, prior knowledge of something coming in that literally... Let's keep this as is as long as we can because everything changes. Well, you know, when you talk about the national debt, here's another good example. They're spending money like they're never going to have to pay it back. (laughs) They're never going to have to pay this national debt off. This whole thing is, uh, how do we say, going to wash away. Irrelevant. (laughs) So when you look at those kind of things going on, when you look at the underground activity, the bases, when you look at Jade Helm and you see the military exercises and you watch all this re- or pre-positioning of military assets, it kind of does make you wonder exactly what they have in mind. And the other question, of course, is the God factor. What does God have in mind, and is he going to allow them to do their thing when they think they should do it, or is he going to allow them to do it when he thinks they should do it? You know, I I guess I'd have to tell everybody, you know, pray that every day be a normal day. Because I think we're soon going to be seeing some rather abnormal (laughs) days. Anyway, just a comment, I guess. Well, while you're talking about the God factor, 
and I know we're running down on time, but I just wanted to interject this. Uh, the mainstream media, especially Fox, has been reporting that, uh, you know, they're now finding uh, piles and piles of bodies uh, scattered throughout Syria and Iraq that uh, ISIS's forces have moved in and slaughtered. And they're one, you know, we've now passed the 10,000 mark, 10,000 Syrian refugees Obama's brought into the United States. And so it said only just a very few, a just aspiring or even Christians, that most of these are Islam. And they're saying, where are the Christian refugees that were being tormented? And you know what? What I think about, Stuart, is, well, who do you think all of those stacks of bodies are in those? Uh, exactly. Exactly. So and you, you know, got, so you basically, so you basically, Stuart, you have another Holocaust. And will God allow that much longer? Will God allow Babylon to reign so high over another Holocaust uh, that's occurring in the Middle East right now? Uh, and it's not a secret. It's not a secret. No, and uh, you know, we ha- we have our own Holocaust with the abortion. Um, business oh going on and you know it, it just it's one thing after another and you do wonder how long oh lord how long and I guess you and I would have hit the delete button as we have mentioned some time <laughs> ago but he's, he's he's not ready to hit it yet but it, it's just it's getting to the point now where I have a headline here that's really interesting Rockefeller's Fund own and have patented the Zika virus. Huh. Wow. They own it. They made it, probably well, made it. Well, Stuart, you remember the uh, Barry Rothman Zika code that I read the other day that he had run a Tor code and said absolutely was created and created under yes. Obama? Yes, I remember that now that you bring it up. Well, that it confirms it then. Yeah, I don't know. We're in a lot of trouble. Um, anything else before we shut down here? I'll just mention what you said, and 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 you know when we were talking about Zika, and when we originally talked mentioned this Toraco Barry Rothman ran on Zika, uh, you said that uh, in Esdras, and you're exactly right because I looked it up again, that that women would begin to birth monsters. Yeah, I know. It's. Well, it goes along with the Book of Enoch, and everything goes haywire. And there's no question the electromagnetic environment is changing, and I think it's having an effect on uh, mutations. It's having an, a mind effect on people. They're losing it for no particular reason now. Uh, and I remember the bots and what they had to say about all of this, and that people would begin to just lose their minds. And it does make you wonder, you know, the Bible says that the Christian is of sound mind and that the Lord protects them. So all the more reason, I guess, one could say to get under the wings of the Lord uh, for this, because I don't see how anybody can look around planet Earth and not know something is amiss. Yeah. Anyway, how can people uh, find you, Larry, if the new listeners? Uh, the quickest way is just go to Larry Taylor's blog, and that's at LarryWTaylor.org, LarryWTaylor.org, and I'm there every day. Yeah, you post more news than most people do, and it's really uh, it's really a site, folks, you need to go visit. Uh, it's amazing how much news is actually going on out there. I mean, it's just incredible. Every day there's something new happening and not good generally. So any other closing comments you got, Larry? I would just say in a, in a later Intel update, we can talk about the sun disease you was mentioning because I think the bots mentioned it. And uh, that's exactly what's occurring. The sun is causing mutations and diseases, and we are now seem to be entered that time frame. Yep. Okay. Well, good night, folks. I hope you enjoyed listening. We'll see you later, Larry.